If you've ever thought about a career change, but were a bit unsure about the economic climate, then this is the video for you. We're going to be talking with Director of Student Outcomes, Mike McCulloch at Career Foundry, about why tech is the perfect recession-proof industry. Before we get to the video, if you have any questions or concerns, drop them in the comments and we'll try and get back to you. So let's dive in. Hi Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, perhaps to begin with, you could give our viewers a quick introduction to yourself and what you do at Career Foundry. Okay, sure, great. Uh, I'm Mike McCullough. I'm the Director of Student Outcomes at Career Foundry. So my team and I are mostly concerned with making sure that our students are well supported uh, in making a successful career change once they've done our programs with us. Um, I've been a career coach for over 20 years and I've worked with all sorts of student pop populations from new immigrants to career changers to students to older workers. Um, and I know that people are really concerned about how to job search effectively in difficult times. And so that's something that my team and I are are always really concerned with making sure that we've got the right resources and supports for our students in accomplishing. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, so then let's just dive straight in. Um, can you tell us which jobs and industries are relatively safe in a recession? Um, well, any job that's that's concerned with something that people are always going to have to do or any service that people are always going to need is going to be something that's safer. Um, to be perfectly frank, there's no such thing as a job that is perfectly safe in a recession. Oh. Because different companies have different experiences, but we can look broadly at the kinds of jobs, the kinds of fields that are, are either going to grow um, regardless of external economic factors or jobs that are going to um, always have a demand. Um, and these jobs are largely jobs that involve the use of um, technical skills that involve, um, uh, you know, a, a degree of, of education, what we call the knowledge economy. So people who are working in creative industries and, and technical industries are going to be in a safer position, generally speaking, than people who are in maybe more service oriented or more um, primary skills based jobs. Okay, so it's not just relating to a job being safe in terms of um, no layoffs, but it's about scope for rapid growth and progression and future proof. Exactly. Nice. Um, where do you think people can find more information about this topic? Are there any gold standard reports that you could suggest a deep dive um, into? <laughs> sure. Well, there's, there's, uh, you know, the, every national government will have some variety of overall analysis of, of where their economy is heading. So uh, organizations like Bureau of Labor Statistics in the United States or uh, the labor market information published by StatsCan in Canada or more broadly, the European Commission has labor market analyses, uh, but these are always going to be kind of trailing indicators because they are things that um, governments and, you know, statisticians have looked at and kind of said, well, this is where we kind of think things are going to go. Uh, but there's also a lot of uh, industry specific information on what jobs are going to be in demand. And it's, it's often as simple as, as Googling, you know, what jobs are, are, are yeah. going to grow over the next decade and you can get um, a wealth of information around what jobs um, are anticipated to be in demand over the coming years. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Mike. So uh, moving on, why do you think tech is one of the top recession proof industries? Uh, well, tech, broadly speaking, is you know any kind of job that involves um, the use of of computers, of technology, of of skills relating to you know information retrieval and analysis, and every job or every company nowadays needs to have some level of tech. So, um, broadly speaking, every company is or should be a tech company uh, because this is how companies and organizations access their clients and their customers now. Mm -hmm. So much of what we do takes place in an online environment from shopping, from gathering information, from you know entertainment, reading the news, booking travel, everything takes place um, through our computers or our smartphones nowadays. Uh, so all of these companies are tech companies and this is what makes tech um, more broadly as, as you know the kinds of jobs involved in creating and supporting that infrastructure and that content um, 
one of the the fields that is 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 going to be safe from recessions broadly speaking i guess it just reflects modern times doesn't it you think tech's so broad but that's because like you say everyone needs it everyone needs um, it great thank you so do you think are there any other industries and fields where a solid tech related background can still be applied um well yeah i mean people often don't think of something like healthcare for example as being terribly tech related yeah. um but uh nowadays uh even within individual practices doctors are uh looking at how they can access their patients uh medical records information digitally or how they can transmit information in a secure manner between um general practitioners and specialists uh governments and or and, and um insurance companies are looking more broadly at how do we um you know do data analysis on trends how do we create portals where people can get you know reliable and accurate health information um you know this is an industry that we wouldn't think tech but mm -hmm. then when we look at what kinds of jobs do people actually do that aren't the the primary job of of that field um then you see all of these tech related jobs that are are, are coming out of the the woodwork yeah definitely Reserve. thank you yeah, that's a great answer how can you upskill um, avoid being stagnant and become more valuable to your employer uh well <laughs> You know, this this really depends on you know being aware of what's going on in your own field. Um, what are the 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 new trends or new technologies that are starting to make an appearance in your industry? Looking forward towards um, you know what are ways that you personally can take charge of your learning. Um, this is often a collaborative endeavor, right? It's it's about talking with your uh with your employer with your friends with your colleagues gathering advice around um where you think things are going and, and what are the the skills that you're going to need to learn to to stay in demand in your field um and this you know if, if you're looking at making a career change for example um this is often about doing that research around where where are your interests where are your passions but also what have you done that you can take from one job to another yeah nice and i feel like anyone can do that that's very accessible for everyone to look at that from their own yeah. perspective yeah. um and it's it's hard to give a sort of a, a step by step for everybody because everybody's different right but to the same token everybody can and should be doing this kind of thinking on a regular basis mm -hmm. um, you know most of the the my fellow career specialists or, or career coaches in the, will tell you that you should be kind of taking stock of your learnings and your accomplishments on certainly an annual basis but even a, a semi-annual or quarterly basis and looking at okay what have i done what can i point to as something that i've learned or that i've accomplished so mm -hmm. that should you need to change jobs you already have your your you know your strategy ready for how you're going to present yourself to the next opportunity yeah great advice thanks um and what do you think some of the key soft skills to consider investing in are uh well you know soft skills are are things that you know you can use in multiple places so you know being able to um uh you know to you know to communicate, to collaborate with other people, right? We think of the teamwork as being a soft skill, but really that's around being able to be flexible, being able to, you know, see different viewpoints, to exercise some empathy. Um, and then, you know, we get to more um, creative skills around thinking about what, uh, you know, what trends are going on, thinking about what, um you know what solutions there are to to problems so problem solving right is a is a classic soft sure. skill and a transferable skill it's looking at okay what was the problem and what is the solution that i can come up with to help solve that problem do you also think it's an advantage to add on some additional tech skills to your role in this climate perhaps if you're a ux designer learning some basic code for example i, I found that that people that try to sort of be um uh, a, a little bit of everything end up not satisfying anybody right yeah. so it's good to have some basic familiarity with things but feeling that you need to to you know know if you're a UX designer to know code as well um only makes you 
you know, really saleable in a very niche kind of a job where it's a, an early stage startup and they have enough money to hire one person to do all of their, their yeah. design and their development, right? But, you know, when, when it comes to companies that have an established presence or that, that are, are a little bit more mature in their development, then, you know, being a designer who knows a little bit of code um, doesn't necessarily help you all that much. Is it better to focus on a degree or more practical training? You know, I would say that that um, focusing on what are the skills that you most need to get started in a job if you're a career changer is certainly the 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 better way to go overall. Right? Yeah. Is that you know uh, a program that will allow you to learn the necessary skills in an accelerated manner, um, especially if you're a career changer, if you've already done your sure. your university or your post-secondary education and you're now looking to gather this the necessary um technical skills to do a, a different job then spending the, the the additional time leaving aside the money on a degree is not going to get you towards your goal any faster than doing it in a, in a more accelerated manner yeah um, I agree. <laughs> uh, what do you think are some of the advantages and disadvantages of a traditional traditional degree versus an online school or boot camp, especially in the context of a recession? Um, the I mean the the advantages um, uh, depending on again where you're at um, come down largely to affordability. Mm. Um, you know, if you look at what the the cost of a full degree might be in some places. Um, it's it, it you know can run in in the large five digit numbers right, um, and there are often other bars to entry, uh, mm. whereas doing it through a, a boot camp can get you those skills in a faster manner in a a more um, accelerated manner. But really, one of the things that differs between traditional education and um, of you know of an alternative education environment um, such as a boot camp is around the theory of adult learning, right? Adults learn best when they have a specific goal in mind and a specific set of of skills or needs that they have that they want to fulfill. Um, and so, learning in a problem-based learning environment such as uh, uh, how we present the the skills and the programs at Career Foundry allows you to focus on what your goal is versus having a lot of additional uh, requirements or information that, that might not be related to that and so therefore might be demotivating in the longer run. Great answer, thank you. And quite a nice segue to my next question, um, which is how do you think that students and graduates um, in the job search um, can generally stand out in a busy market in uncertain times? Well, one of the things that, that makes anybody stand out in, in the job market is understanding who they are in relation to the jobs that they're after. Um, and this doesn't mean to to be um, to be uh, overly humble or overly worried about you know the fact that you are entering a new market. It's actually about taking stock of where you've come from and where you're going and how those things add value to the potential job that you're after. Um, this is why a lot of what we focus on trying to teach our students is not just the technical skills, but it's actually understanding what their path and what their goal has been um, so that they can then talk with confidence to employers about how they can do these things. Nice. What advice would you give to someone who's interested in a tech role but not sure which path to take? Um, well, I would again, I would go back to you know, you know, doing some research, right? Thinking about what are the the kinds of things that you're interested in, what are you passionate about, um, doing some uh, what we call informational interviewing. So talking to professionals in the field um, and finding out from them what their you know what their job is like what kinds of things are interesting to them what the, the you know the major challenges or the major skills that they use are and then asking yourself is this the kind of job that you can see yourself doing or is you know is this the sort of role that you're passionate about 
Um, you know, one of the things that, that makes people most successful in their job search is really knowing why they want to do this thing over and above the extrinsic factors of, well, you know, it's a job and it will pay the bills, right? It's actually, it's something that I am really interested in and, and passionate about and allows me to exercise uh, some of my own creativity or some of my own, um, uh, you know, interests in, you know, in a, in a, in a market environment. And those are the things that are going to be the jobs that people are going to be most successful in. Nice. Thank you. You've mentioned some very practical tips so far, but what would you say that our viewers can do now in terms of next steps? Um, well, I would say, uh, you know, check out the, the, the different course offerings that different um, organizations have, um, you know, look at, at what, are, you know, for example, we offer, you know, free seven day courses and you can, you know, dip your toes into what it's like to be a designer or developer or data analyst um, and say, okay, is this interesting for me? Is this something that I think I would like to do? Right. Those are sort of the, the immediate um, uh, things that you can, you can do. But then, you know, beyond that, it's uh, like I said, it's do your research, check out what's what's going to best meet your needs and follow that path. Uh, well, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, you gave some really great advice there and tips for anyone who might be watching this and thinking about a career change or future proofing their career in uncertain times. So thank you very much for that um, great insight. So you're most welcome, Alison, and um, good luck to anyone out there who's thinking about career change and we hope to see you. Thank you so much for watching. We hope we've answered some of your questions and concerns about career changing into tech. In terms of next steps, if you want to get a flavor for the tech industry, Career Foundry has a range of free short courses you can try to see what's a good fit for you. You can visit our website to find a whole range of short courses and also book a free call with a program advisor to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.